Hi, I'm Ubay Shabandar, and today we interviewed General Adib Bashir, a retired four-star general and the former deputy chief to the Turkish general staff, where he tells us about his 40-year experience in battling the PKK terrorists. General, you are a practitioner of counterinsurgency, counterterrorism, with over 40 years serving your country, serving Turkey, in the field, on a variety of fronts. You've seen it all in the fight against the PKK terror group, fight against other terrorist elements, and as the Turkish armed forces became more and more engaged in the Syrian conflict. Interestingly enough, another four general, four-star general, recently said that Turkey is the only NATO ally that is facing an ongoing insurgency or a counter-terror campaign. Mm -hmm. That general was General Jim, Jim Mattis, yeah. the U.S. Secretary of Defense. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, having been there in the command of the Second Army as the Turkish Armed Forces battled the PKK, tell us a little bit about your experience on that front, on the fighting PKK terrorism and that insurgency and how it evolved and how the Turkish Armed Forces responded to that fight. So what I want to say as far as the Turkey's uh, struggle, Turkey's fight against terrorism is that now this is not only for Turkey, but this, this in general terms, when you are as a state, as a, as a uh, you know, legal state, uh, if you are fighting against terrorism, uh, there is such a dilemma in front of you. The terrorist groups have no limits in their actions. Mm -hmm. They can kill children, they can kill civilians, they can uh, put a bomb in the crowd and they don't mind how many civilians have died. Is there any particular PKK terror attack that stands out in your mind? For instance, they uh, brought a car with the bomb, uh, the remote control bomb in the car, and they uh, blow it uh, near the family houses of, the, of, of our police officers, policemen, and, and the army you know, family houses. So uh, many uh, innocent uh, children, women, um, died out of those uh, attacks. Now what I, I, I was trying to say is that uh, terrorists have nothing to limit their actions. Mm -hmm. But when you come to your security forces, they are bound with the, with the law, with, with the you know, uh, human rights, uh, all eyes on them. Uh, whether they are doing something wrong as far as the human rights, uh, international human rights rules and agreements are concerned. So uh, you, are, you are not free-handed mm. in fighting terrorism. The this, terrorists can do whatever they want, they, they but your do, forces that's right, have that's restrictions. Right. Their hands are kind of, you know, You have to respect tied human up, rights. Tied up, that's right, mm. that's right. So. And you have to watch, as, as a state uh, official forces of, the, of, a, of a legal state, you have to watch uh, the rights of civilians in the region where you are fighting against terrorism. That was the, one of the uh, most important uh, elements of the Turkish army and Turkish security forces while they were fighting against PKK terrorism. And that order always came from the top down to... That, that's right, that's right. Mm. That, that's why that took so long. Otherwise, it should never take so long, of course. Uh, a huge Turkish army with, with a great experience on fighting a war. Uh, Nearly three decades, uh, the war against right. the PKK terrorism. That's terrain. right, it's, it's, it, it took decades. You know, it started in 1984 the first uh, PKK attack. And of course, the PKK terrorist organization has started to organize uh, before then, but, but uh, their uh, first 
uh, actions against Turkey, Turkish people and Turkish security forces has been in 1984. Uh, so uh, that that that's that's the problem. Not not only for Turkey, but for uh, for all those who are fighting against terrorism in their country. It's interesting that you say that, General. As Operation Olive Branch was launched just a few days ago, it's been an extensive disinformation campaign. Many say a disinformation campaign by the YPG PKK terror group amongst international media. Do you believe? that they are winning on that field of battle? Well, uh, that, that's very important, of course. Uh, I uh, would like to see that uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have much better organized on that regard. I mean, uh, we have much better organized establishments to, uh, to conduct that mission to uh, take over Absolutely. that mission and, and carry it out. Uh, maybe there is. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, everybody don't have to know, I, uh, shouldn't know, uh, probably, uh, that uh, our state has, has such an apparatus uh, which is trying to do it uh, in the best way they can. Uh, but, but uh, as a citizen of this country, I would like to see more active type of uh, psychological operation. I mean, informing the international media and our friends. Uh, I, mu I must tell you, while uh, you are fighting against terrorism or you are conducting another type of military operations like, uh, like Afrin now, uh, the diplomacy is more important than the military operations or any kind of operations. Diplomacy is the most important area which a uh, state should take uh, first of other considerations and uh, should apply correct policies and should apply influenced policies, I mean uh, effective policies uh, toward international bodies, toward international uh, organizations, toward our friends and allies around the world and towards the, uh, the uh, states of the region particularly. Uh, starting from Russia, United States, those uh, big powers who have their own uh, problems or their own objectives in the region and they are uh, running after those objectives uh, and they don't mind whether you will fall under their steps or not, uh, you know, they just want to keep go and do whatever they, they want in the region. Uh, but it's been a point of friction. We speak of diplomacy in general and Turkey's diplomacy with its allies, whether it's with its NATO allies or Western partners and its partnership with the United States. But there's a fric some friction recently in the past years and in the past few days leading up to the Operation Olive Branch. We've seen, you've seen the, the statements from Washington. We've seen the statements from Ankara. Turkey says that it has a, the right to defend its national security interests in the fight against PKK terrorists and their Syrian affiliates. Yet some are asking Turkey to use diplomacy. But can diplomacy be used when you're facing a terror adversary that is certainly not willing to engage in talks, at least certainly not now. What's your take on how you can balance diplomacy on one hand, yet national security objectives of Turkey as it fights the PKK, not only in Turkey, but also in northern Syria? Of course, the uh, PKK is our long-term problem. 
we are not meeting with PKK or started fighting with PKK recently for many years, as we talked before. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, let's put it on one side, but in Syria, what's happening in Syria? Now, let me start with that. Uh, years ago, uh, there was a map of Kurdistan on one of the American military magazine. Later, the American authorities said that this is not our view. A uh, retired uh, lieutenant colonel has put this map on the, on the magazine. Uh, that's it. That doesn't mean uh, much. Well, uh, our authorities uh, said... And this map included Turkey, northern Syria, Sure, Iraq. sure, southeastern Turkey, uh, about four or five uh, provinces of southeastern Turkey were included to that Kur Kurdistan. And uh, this is the PKK YPG objective? Well, PKK's objective is not that small. Uh, you know, <laughs> it aims much larger Kurdistan. Oh, that, that's, uh, I, I, I'm going to say something about that too. Uh, and uh, later, we have noticed that, that our American friends uh, while we were uh, trying to coordinate and cooperate in our fight against terrorism because we consider, our governments, our authorities consider that, that the, uh, these terrorist activities in the region is, uh, is a kind of threat to the overall balance in the region. Our friends and allies, particularly in NATO, should stand behind Turkey, at least. And the U.S. was once working with Turkey on the Joint Operations Center and targeting the PKK in the Kandil in Iraq. But what do you think has changed since? Now we're seeing statements from Washington that the fight against the YPG is not no, a priority. Uh, no, it, what do you think changed, sir? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a shame to see uh, that, that our friends and allies are, uh, have been have been uh, arming such a terrorist organization. Now, let me tell you one thing. I, I was uh, tasked by the government uh, after my retirement to work with uh, the Americans. Uh, uh, General uh, Joe Ralston was my counterpart in the American side. Uh, to uh, remove the, uh, you know, difficulties, problems, uh, and, and make our, our cooperation and coordination in fighting terrorism a more effective one. Uh, we have discussed with General Austin. General Austin, uh, I knew him beforehand, so he was a good friend of mine, and we were all agreed on all points, General Ralston was uh, very open-minded and, and, you know, an excellent general, an excellent officer. He was retired as well. And, uh, but when we come to the uh, State Department and talk to the people there, we try to explain them that we are friends when you talk to Turkish people and you tell them that, well, these guys are friends, Turkish people do understand it in a different way. They think that they can trust them and they must be trust him. Therefore, uh, this is the understanding, general understanding of friendship and, you know, uh, alliance. Uh, trust must be a two-way street. Two-way street, sure, two-way street. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that's the way to, of Turkish people's mentality, you see. Uh, they, they look at the case like that. You think that. the State Department understood what you were trying to tell them? Well, uh, we, we asked them to do three things for us. Not more than that. Not to come up and fight against terrorists uh, with us, send their, uh, you know, security elements to fight terrorist, terrorism, terrorists with us. No, we only ask them to uh, 
influence on the uh, European countries uh, and try to uh, try to provide that they stop uh, giving political support to PKK. The European uh, countries European giving political countries, support to the PKK. Mainly, mainly the European countries. Now, many don't know this, sir. Many who are not experts don't realize that political support to the PKK political support. was being provided That's right. by Western European countries. That's right. That's right. Uh, they have been uh, blaming PKK in, in the open way when, when it comes to you know, the uh, public relations and so on. But on the other hand, they have been uh, turning their head another way while PKK is doing all sorts of propaganda and opening offices and you know uh, collecting taxes uh, from the Kurdish people living in that country and so on. We said, secondly, try to cut off PKK's uh, financial support, which again comes mainly from Europe. Why? Because PKK is selling uh, cocaine or these kind of... Uh, Narco trafficking. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, they are doing that trafficking and, and getting money at least 300, 300 million uh, dollars a year. That's the report of Europol, not, not mine. Europol's report. So okay. did you believe that there was at least the political willpower of the US to work with Europe to counter PKK's financial lifeline based on your, that's, that's your right. talks with them? What, what, we, what we ask them, what we expect that, that the United States would put some pressure on the European countries and uh, provide them to stop uh, to uh, launder that black money of PKK and avoid PKK can easily launder that money in the banks of Western Europeans and in Southern Cyprus and then put it into her financial system, okay? That, that was another uh, requirement from the United States. And the third one is uh, influence on Barzani. Mm -hmm. Tell him to stop logistic movement in his area in northern Iraq. In, in so the former prime minister of northern Iraq, the northern Iraq Kurdish region, that's right. was providing the, logistical facilitation to the PKK in well, your Yeah, of course, yes. Uh, he, w he was saying nothing. He was not doing anything to, to uh, stop it, uh, to help Turkey with regard to uh, the logistic support of PKK. How could have Washington avoided this alliance with the YPG PKK? And could it have worked better with Turkey to work with other groups, perhaps, on Syria to fight and defeat Daesh? Yeah. I, I understand, I understand, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's very difficult to explain to people that you're fighting one terrorist organization using another terror organization. This terror organization, terrorist organization, is uh, getting much stronger by your uh, support and you should consider that after finishing Daesh, this terrorist organization has other uh, objectives in mind, other goals uh, and objectives in mind. Do you think the Americans Which, realize these objectives of the YPG or are they of, naive? Of course, it's, it's, not, it's not possible that the Americans uh, are not aware of what, what the, uh, YPG uh, and uh, its uh, friends, PKK, and finally the uh, northern, the Kurdish uh, administration in northern Iraq. Uh, we all know that their main uh, objective in the region in Syria is to establish a kind of uh, channel going through the north of Syria to, to the Mediterranean Sea. Now, uh, our American friends, uh, it's not possible to say that they are not aware of that, that uh, 
uh, final objective and so on. But the uh, first step for that, for the first step of that at least, uh, was the conditions have been created in Syria. How that those conditions have been created, that could be uh, argued, that could be talked about, uh, you know. Uh, the conditions for the conflict. For the conflict, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when Syria has become uh, such a, become a country in, in such a turmoil, you know, uh, everybody fighting each other. Uh, on the one side, the Sunnis, uh, on the other side, the Shi forces, and, you know, the uh, government forces uh, and the Kurdish uh, groups, Daesh mainly is, is the uh, original, uh, one of the original and, and the most important threat in the region, as we all know. Uh, so uh, within such a condition, uh, it was uh, much easier to find a way, you know, to establish that northern corridor to Mediterranean Sea for the Kurd Kurdish so they took advantage of the chaos in Syria. Sure, in sure, sure, sure. And they, they tried to take that advantage. And our American friends, uh, uh, I surely don't know, and I can say that this happened this way, but uh, I have some doubt that, that the Americans uh, have promised and YPG and, and the PKK and the others uh, that, okay, I will help you in achieving that end, but first you should fight against Daesh. Now, fighting against Daesh, uh, was it necessary to cooperate with PKK? That's the million dollar question. To my mind, no. To my mind, no. Uh, this is a regional problem. This is a regional question to be solved uh, within ourselves, I mean, sold by us together, by Russians, by Americans, by Turks, all together, because Daesh has been a big problem for the region. And of course, Turkey has faced Daesh attacks sure, inside its territory. Sure, you know how many uh, attacks have occurred by, by Daesh in Turkey. So as a practitioner of counterinsurgency, as a former four-star general, you see this operation as being necessary. What do you see it ending? To my mind, to my mind, as a citizen of this country, uh, I would like to see that my country's security interests are guaranteed, guaranteed, not only uh, provided, but guaranteed for the future. Uh, to have that end, Turkey has to deal with all PKK uh, organizations, uh, establishments in northern Regardless Syria. Regardless of their name. Northern Syria, uh, Syria that's right. Either uh, west of Euphrates and east of Euphrates, up to the northern uh, Iraq, up to the uh, official uh, I mean, Iraqi border. That's a larger battlefield, sir. Do you think the Turkish yes. armed forces are ready for this e challenge? Uh, well, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that this uh, has to be done uh, in one day, or uh, this has to be uh, dealt with uh, in the same uh, days or dates. Of course, uh, now after Afrin, uh, I would like to see that that Turkish government decides uh, to go on Manbij. Because that strategic city in eastern Aleppo province. That, that's equally important as Afrin mm. uh, for Turkey's security. Uh, as you know, uh, since a couple of days, they, they have been throwing rockets uh, into our border towns. 
from Manbij? From Manbij, from uh, Afrin area probably. Uh, and yesterday, for instance, they sent a couple of rockets, uh, one of which uh, we came into a mosque where people have been praying and two uh, citizens died and many of them are wounded and so on. So, uh, I, I mean, we, we cannot leave it for chance, you know, in Turkey we have such saying, uh, we cannot leave it uh, to chance. Uh, okay, uh, that may happen or may not happen, we cannot say that. We have not that luxury to say that. You have to guarantee. You don't have the luxury of time. The, the, that's right. Mm -hmm. We have to guarantee uh, the security of our country, security of our people. General Adib Bashir, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank and Thank you. you for your service. Thank you very much.